What's up YouTube, Chris here. Today we are talking about the Norco Fluid Hardtail series. So it, it goes in a few, there's three, two, one. As you know, Norco does scoring and scaling of bikes as if you're winning a competition. So the three is the entry level model, two is next, one is the highest level. The Fluid series is in the trail bike for Norco. So this is kind of the bike which will rule one and all so anyone can use it and it can be used anywhere the most comparable to this one is the trek roscoe so the trek roscoe uses 27 and a half inch wheels whereas all of the norco fluids now are strict 29 unless you're on the super small frame and that's whether you're in the full suspension version or the hardtail we're gonna focus on the hardtail today so let's get this video going Welcome back to all the people who have already subscribed. There is over 3,000 of you, which is pretty amazing in just a short few months. Keep an eye out on this channel if you're interested in all these kind of bike reviews, talking, impressions. Um, I try and kind of go over my opinion of them. I sell a lot of them myself. I ride a lot of them myself. So my opinion is fairly true and honest about what this bike is. And if I can kind of tell you a little bit about it and help your decision, then hopefully you can subscribe to my channel below because 97% of people who watch these videos don't. Okay, so back to the video. The Norco Fluid is an interesting bike. Like I said, comes with a full suspension. We're gonna ignore that today. What we're gonna focus on now is where everyone wants to go, and that is the Norco Fluid Hardtail. This is a 29er with an almost plus size tire. You may as well call it plus. In every other brand that I know of, this would be the plus kind of compatible bike. You're getting a 2.6 inch wide tire. It's huge. It is what most of the full suspension bikes across many brands are coming with on the trail side. Smart wheel kind of size, so the smaller frames come with a smaller 27 and a half. The bigger bikes are all gonna come in 29 because they are the fastest rolling. So the chainstays have all been shortened, a bit more cut out on it, makes it a nice agile light bike, even though it's got these big 29 by 2.6s on it. It only has front suspension. So, if you're new to this kind of stuff, what's the difference? Hardtail, front suspension, full suspension, soft tail. The main two are a full suspension and a hardtail. This one is a hardtail because it has no rear suspension. Depending which level you're looking at, they all come with pretty respectable kind of front suspensions to that. Whether it's an SR Suntour all the way up to kind of a RockShox level. They're all gonna perform well for the price range and they're gonna actually be able to be a little more adjustable and tunable as you go up. Every single model of the Norco Fluid Hardtails come with the lockout fork, which is nice. I don't use mine much, but it is a nice little feature to know it's there. They have 120 mil of travel, so a little bit more than your entry level kind of bikes where you're kind of dabbling into trail. This one knows you're actually hunting out for those bigger, beefier drops, the rougher terrain. The tires are gonna help absorb it. The 120 mil travel is gonna help absorb it. As well, the geometry is a little more relaxed and a little more faster flowing. It'll roll over things a lot easier. So that's one key difference between this and like an XC race bike or something along those faster cross country style bikes. Cross country, you're really focusing on the smoother, flatter terrain with faster speeds. With a trail bike, although it's a kind of do everything fast, it is always gonna be on the more forgiving side of things. So faster in the rougher terrain, potentially a little bit slower in the smoother stuff, but you know, unless you're losing a race, then you probably shouldn't be worried about it. So Norco fluids are all coming with hydraulic disc brakes now, large disc rotors. So that's gonna give you a lot of stopping power no matter which model you're in. Going forward to 2021, teeny little changes have happened. If you've done some research, you'll have seen that there was a Norco Fluid Hardtail 3. They actually are kind of dropping it this year. No official response yet to figure out whether it's actually gone gone or just kind of flipping over the old 2020 model. Under the new 2021 bikes, there is no Fluid Hardtail 3. With the two and the one for 2021, you're both getting a dropper post and a one by drivetrain. So with the 2021 models, you are now getting a dropper post on both of them, which is fantastic. 
It is a, a necessity nowadays for trail riding. It's super handy. It makes it easier to ride pretty much everywhere. It's it's just a better thing to have and it's very nice to have just even for climbing on and off your bike. Between the two models, they have a 10 speed and a 12 speed. Obviously the 12 speed is gonna be a lot better for those finer increments towards the slower speeds or the low gear range. That being said, those 10 speed Dior systems are fantastic and you actually get that same big uh, chain ring as you would kind of ratio as a 12 speed. So it's pretty respectable. It's a really close call between the two of them. Obviously, if you have the money, the trail features are better on the one. The suspension, the brakes, and the shifting are all noticeably better. The tires are gonna be noticeably better. All in the off-road side of things. I don't think on-road you'd notice it too much. Tires, maybe you're rolling resistant a bit. Braking, cruising around town and stuff, you're just not gonna notice it. But when it comes to actually trail riding, the missing gears in the rear end for those lower climbs may mean you're either in an easier gear than you want it to be or a harder gear than you want it to be. That's kind of the downside. You never get to find that perfect gearing, whereas you will in a 12 speed. Having a dropper post is fantastic. We already said this. So as an aluminum frame, cables all run internally now, as with pretty much every Norco bike. They were one of the last companies to do it. Um, but it's nice to see that they're all going internal. It just looks a lot cleaner and it will prevent a little bit of damage. If you're looking at this between, if you're looking at this or a Trek Roscoe, let's say, the Norco Fluid is gonna be a really fast rolling bike. Those bigger wheel sizes should be noticeable compared to the Roscoe. That being said, the Roscoe's geometry is really dialed. Norco still keeps it in this kind of I'm a trail bike, but I can also be a kind of everyday bike kind of range. It's a little lower and longer, more progressive geometry. That's the way things are going, but they still hold back a little bit, which I actually like. It means that when I'm not going hard on trails all the time, I'm actually gonna have a nice comfy upright kind of, not upright, but a nice comfy bike to ride as opposed to a trail bike in town. It is gonna be a really, really nice ride no matter kind of where you go. So who's the bike for? Uh, the Norco Fluids, honestly, I think should be your entry level full suspension. Norco are one of the few companies who actually make this style of bike in a full suspension, so it kind of blurs the lines a little bit. But if you could, I'd definitely go Norco Fluid Hardtail, skip the full suspension, and then aim for an optic as kind of your progression through bikes because you'll get a noticeably better trail bike in an optic than you would a hardtail to just a full suspension version. Especially, you may lose a little bit of the kind of higher end part spec from a fluid hardtail one to an entry level full suspension. It's a little complicated. You can do anything with these bikes and the price is very aggressive, which is nice. The storms now are coming up where they're blurring the lines even more as to what's going on. That's why I think the Fluid 3 hardtail has not been announced because the Storm 1 is honestly fantastic. You could probably fit a very similar sized tire as the, as the Fluid. So it, it's, it's a very upgradable bike series. Overall, Norco has done like a fantastic job of no matter what bike you buy, it's gonna be a user friendly bike. And on the top of that, it's gonna be able to do anything with very minor tweaks. It's gonna be excellent at whatever you need it to do. The Fluid Hardtail myself is right in the middle of the Storm kind of entry level. I'm committing to a full suspension. It is in this like dream bike land. They've really just designed the Fluid to be super progressive and really a rider's bike. So you can actually perform superbly well on a Hardtail bike with bigger wheels, fast rolling. It, it's like they've threw a little bit of everything into it, a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of cross country with the 29ers, plus size or bigger size wheels. So they're not a 2.8, but big. coming from the trail bike family, progressive geometry, wide bars. I don't know what else they could have put in this, apart from they have literally checked off every single box. Anything someone is looking for in a bike, if you spend a teeny bit more money than that entry level range, you have a bike which should last you forever unless you really want a full suspension and spend that money for those benefits. Like they have made a bike which 
can rule everything. I'm pretty impressed with it. I'm excited to see one. Hopefully we get some in person. Obviously with the bike shortage and it's more now a part shortage, we are seeing orders disappear very quickly. So I would recommend checking them out online. And if you have any questions, call down to your local bike store or come in if you can and pretty much put money down because they're just gonna all be gone if you don't. It's kind of that crazy year. I don't think they really caught up from 2020. So even though the vaccine's all here, um, yeah. If you're looking for a great all-around bike, the Norco Fluid Hardtails are it. it do, it's pretty simple if they do just keep the two models. One's the entry-level one with a great power spec on it. The next one up has an excellent power spec and I, I'm pretty much speechless by it. You can do a lot with these bikes and you can put a skinny tire on it and go XC. You can put a beefy tire on it and go in the snow. I don't know what you can do with these bikes. Comment below if you already have this bike, if I missed anything, which is probably a lot. I don't go super technical on these videos, especially when I don't have the bike here to even look at. Hopefully this helped you out. I would recommend putting an order in pretty much yesterday. All right, guys, thank you for watching again. Please subscribe. Like I said, most of you are not. And um, yeah, good luck out there.